Hello, uh, welcome back to another video where today I'm going to be, hopefully, getting Kubernetes to run on this server and those two servers. Right now, I'm just installing RAM because those ones only have one gig of RAM and this one only had three. Now it has 16, hopefully, and those will have six and three. Now you could not ask me at all what these servers are because they are, I have no clue. They are some sort of Intel server, I don't know. But all I know is that they have Xeon CPUs, obviously. And they have a Giga brand, so let's fix them. So I've got the cover off and all I've got to do now is try to figure out how to get the shrouding off so I can access the RAM. I took the cover off, it wasn't, like it wasn't bolted down at all, it literally just sat there. And it seems as if I've got two CPUs, which we'll have to confirm when I boot into the BIOS, but that's pretty cool. And they're full copper. It would seem my fears have come true. This is not a DDR3 server, so I can't upgrade the RAM, but that's okay. A gig should be fine for what I'm trying to do. I'll just slap these sticks in that server. I opened up the other one to check if it was any different with the RAM, and it looks basically identical, so I'm not going to try and install anything. This server opens up pretty much exactly the same as the other one, so you just have to get your screwdriver in the screw hole here, pull out the screw, and then undo the lock. And I can't do this one-handed, bear with me for a sec. And there, all you have to do is lift off the cover. Boom, you're in. Oh crap, I left the RAM over there. Now, unlike those servers, which I think have two CPUs, this one, for sure, I know, only has one. So we only have six memory slots. So here are my four modules that I've left over. These three sticks are one gigabyte, and this one, which is double-sided, is four gigs. So as you may have guessed, I'm gonna put a four gig and a one gig and hope that nothing breaks itself. Now I've gone ahead and done some off camera closing up the servers. So now they're nice and closed up and ready to hopefully power on. Now a uh, quick side tour here, but um, I'm in my rack right now, as you can see. Uh, don't ask about the phones, but basically I have this nice Dell power connect with 48 ports of probably gigabit. I don't know, I've never turned it on. But uh, hopefully today is that day because I need Ethernet for these servers. And this is probably overkill for what, three servers, four servers, but that's okay. Now I need to choose an operating system and as you can see on screen I've decided to choose Ubuntu server because it happens to be the OS I'm most familiar with. Um, it was really simple to download and uh, while that's downloading why don't I tell you a bit about what I'm going to be installing on said operating system. So when it comes to Kubernetes there's K3S and K8S. K3S is a lighter version originally made by Rancher Labs. Um, and for my purposes, I don't need to install the massive heavy version of Kubernetes. So just to mess around, I'm going to be installing K3S. Now with that said, I think the download is finished, so let's insert a USB stick and make it bootable. Okay, we're back around the front of the servers, and uh, as you can see, uh, I have the USB stick, and as much as I just want to plug it in and power it up and install it all, these guys don't have drives. They look like they do, but there is no drive in there. So, my genius plan is to take these drives, two of them, and just shove them up here because they're the exact same, I don't know, trays or whatever you call them. Look, one terabyte drives. I don't care that they're not SSDs, I'm not going to do that. There we go. Perfect. Now I just do that for this one as well. Them in there. Boom. Now I can power them up. So I'll record that as well because that'll be cool. So I just have to 
click on this switch. Now, let's do the big part. Um, monitor work as well. It does indeed, but uh, there's no display plugged in, so amazing. As you can see, a couple of them have thrown some errors, so I'm now have to get a display cable out, um, and hopefully I uh, can fix some other issues as well when I'm at it. Okay, so now I'm going to turn all of this scrap into networking and display for these servers. Okay, so as you can see, I have fixed the display issue, the keyboard issue, and around the back here, I've got a rather clever, ignore the mess of my admin, I had no short ethernet cables, so I can deal with it, but um, I've got this TP-Link router here, it's running OpenWRT or whatever it's called, I can't remember what it's called, some open source software, and right now it is acting as basically a massive network card, and it's going up to my router and providing internet out through these ethernet ports on the back which I am then going into this power connect which I hope has no software on it because I have not reset it or ever even powered it on and stuff plugged in and then it plugs into all the servers through this mess of cables which you are going to still ignore and then hopefully it should work so let's get some, uh, some Ubuntu installed on these servers There we go. Okay, yep, it's a RAM issue. Dim B1 and B1 and B2. B2. Mm, it's right at the bottom of the stack. Okay, well, maybe I'll move on to the other servers first then. Now, what's the bet these ones also have a RAM issue? Just a uh, heads up here I've never powered these up, so I have no clue how well it's going to work at all um yeah huh. they might be dead i'm not sure oh we have stuff oh interesting okay i want to enter the setup crap did i miss the window damn it uh raid technology bringing up the controller oh no <laughs> amazing huh ah well this might take a while so i'll uh, meet you once it's done i guess so we have a couple surprises here, um, as you can see, uh, it is, uh, build date is 2006, as you can see, uh, it's got 2 gigs of RAM, and, uh, 2 cores running at 3 gigahertz, so, uh, so much for a powerful CPU. Just wanted to clarify that, um, I didn't know at the time that count meant that there were 2 CPUs, so I was right about that before. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but it says... 5160 is uh, so it's a Xeon 61 uh, 5160 with two gigs of RAM, which is a lot more than I thought actually. So now I'm going to insert the USB drive from the bottom one into the middle one and hopefully get the Ubuntu server installed. So let's power it down. While I'm waiting, I will boot up the second machine as well and see what's what. This might take a while. Needless to say, it's never that easy. So as you may have guessed, that didn't work. So now, I have replaced all the RAM in the bottom server because I gave up on the top two. And I'm trying to see if it'll work now. And as you can see, it boots and all the RAM shows up. Yay! Sadly, this is the part where everything started to go south. Hello and welcome to the next day. Um, so basically I did um, a bit of off-camera trying to install it and um, that didn't exactly work out because I'll show you. 
So as you can see, it boots into the BIOS here. If I come over to boot options, you'll see we have Ubuntu here as one of the boot options. But the interesting thing is the drive containing Ubuntu isn't even plugged in. So that's interesting thing number one. And number two, even when it is plugged in, I'll show you what it does. Plug the drive in, and as you can see, it still boots to the setup, which is very interesting. And when I try to boot the Ubuntu, it just refreshes the screen for some reason, and then never boots. So that's interesting. If I quit without saving, it boots right back up into this screen. So something's going on, and I think I need to figure it out. Okay, so next we have this clip here, right? And I rambled on for five minutes and it made no sense. So I'm gonna do a voiceover. But basically what I said was that I'm not gonna use a USB stick plugged into the server. I'm gonna install it on my laptop um, using a drive bay to that hard drive that's on screen right now. And uh, little did I know at the time, this would cause an issue right at the end. Ah, uh, but spoiler alert, uh, this didn't really work for the other two servers, so yeah. Okay, so welcome to my new dodgy setup with my ancient little laptop here and my probably ancient drive dock. Anyway, here's the drive from the server. Here's my Prusa screwdriver that came with my Prusa Mark uh, MK3S Plus, I think it's called. I don't know. It's ages ago. Anyway, now I've got to try to unscrew this. Whoa. Those are some really tight screws. Hold on. So yeah, that didn't work either. And it was actually the fault of that old laptop. So I think I used my regular laptop in the end. Also, thanks a lot, Windows, for updating right when I was about to use you. So to fix the issue of the bottom server, uh, as you can see, I've just got this drive dock here plugged in around back. And yeah, that should solve the issue. I'm not bothered to mess around with drives and configuration and crap like that. So I'm just gonna leave it as an external drive and hope it works. Okay, so from here on out, I stopped working on the bottom server because I had installed it on that external drive and I was done. Um, what you're viewing right now is me attempting to install it on both the servers, both of the One U servers, using the RAID controller to create logical disks. It didn't work. And now, at this point, I was literally trying everything to make these work. I had to move the servers into another room because they were making so much noise. They were annoying everyone in my house. And uh, basically, I tried everything with those one terabyte enterprise drives and nothing, nothing would work. As you can see in these clips, I'm installing it and it's hanging for hours and hours. Like these are sped up a lot. Okay, it's been a lot of time lapses and not a lot of talking, so I thought I'd provide a bit of an update quickly. So, as you can see right now, I am attempting again to install it for like the 70th time. Um, and that's not like being sarcastic or anything, I'm pretty sure I'm probably in the 70s of how many times I've installed this. But I don't know. So essentially, um, I nearly dropped my phone there, but uh, I've tried with those Enterprise SATA drives there, and it never seems to fully work. So, uh, I pulled out these old SAS hard drives that I've got, and I've disabled the internal RAID controller on the top server there, and now it's down to the SAS controller, and it seems to be working. So, hopefully, if everything goes to plan, this will not crap itself, and then we'll all be happy. So, yeah, hope so. It worked. It is booting. I am so happy. You do not even understand. I've spent the past, what, two and a half days trying to get this two, these two servers to boot. Okay. So, uh, the long-awaited startup is finally ready. We've got all the servers installed. 
And all I should need to do after I've obviously powered it all on is connect via SSH and install Kubernetes. So yay, now enjoy this uh, super duper loud startup. Okay, so um, I've now installed um, K3S Kubernetes onto the three servers here. So if I run this command, I am SSH'd into the Ubuntu Server 1 right now. You can see we've got 1, 2, and 3 running right here. Alright, so um, now all that's left to do is run a simple script I copied off the internet and uh, hopefully, hopefully it should want to run this. Um, server nodes that have been created. Wow, pods, lots of pods. Now we're going to create a service with apparently one command. So that, oh my god, I keep on forgetting sudo. Wow, it's exposed, so hopefully. Alright, we have... Wow. So now, if I open up an internet browser right here, you see that um, I should be able to go to this IP, hopefully. Well, there you go. And there you go, that is, I'm pretty sure, that. Well, there you go, um, that's not exactly the best demonstration of Kubernetes, but, uh, uh, sure. Well, I think we've gotten it installed. This video's been pretty long already, so, uh, thanks for making it to the end, and, uh, hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. Uh, man, thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned, as there might be a part two, because I've got this server, which I might want to add to the cluster.